coming to terms with my mother's death all my life, and I think that that sort of cropped up in a lot of my writing. Madonna's father, Silvio, was left to raise the Ciccone siblings on a rigorous diet of old-fashioned discipline and religious devotion. The thing is, if my father hadn't been strict, I wouldn't be who I am today, and I think, um, um, I think that his strictness taught me a certain amount of discipline that has helped me in my life and my career. Madonna achieved exceptional grades in high school and took part in several theatre productions. True passion, though, only flourished while dancing. Age 13, Madonna crossed paths with dance teacher Christopher Flynn, who not only became an inspirational figure, but also a genuine friend. Three years on, age 16, Madonna got her first taste of the limelight at her first gay discotheque. She would clear the floor and we'd just start cutting loose and everybody loved her. And not because she was showing off. It's just that she could, she so thoroughly enjoyed dancing. In 1976, Madonna earned herself a University of Michigan dance scholarship. But in her soul, she knew there was only one place for her art. I knew I wanted to be an artist. I knew I wanted to be a creative person. I wasn't sure what form that would take, but I felt like I needed to be in an environment that really celebrated all of those things, which is why I came to New York. I certainly did not think for a second that I would have the sort of global impact that I've had. I mean, I was just trying to get, get the hell out of Michigan. <laughs> With only a few dollar bills to her name, no return ticket, but an all-consuming ambition, Miss Ciccone headed for New York City, where her involvement with music happened by chance. Boyfriend Dan Gilroy needed a drummer and guitarist for his band, The Breakfast Club. Madonna took on both roles, but it simply was not enough. They already had two singers in the band, so they would never let me get up and sing a song, because what's the point? One day, I finally convinced them. They finally said, OK. I got up to sing one song, and the other guy went back to play the drums. And, like, I got a standing ovation. Despite the standing ovation, Madonna was denied the role of lead singer, so she quit the band to pursue her own music career. A brief stint with another band followed, and by 1980, Madonna had completed her first solo demo recording. A night like any other, and Madonna got herself down to her favourite club, Danceteria. Little did she know it would lead to her fateful meeting with Sire Records executive Michael Rosenblatt. She was radiating. Whatever that it is, she had it more than anyone I had ever seen up until that point or since. I mean, it was just bouncing off the walls. A recording contract offer followed two days later, and her first single, Everybody, was released in 1982. In 1983, Madonna released her first self-titled album, but it wasn't until the following year that Madonna would embark on her legacy, bringing a worldwide audience along with her. At the beginning of her career in the early 80s, a delicately voiced Madonna quickly established herself as a dance pop diva. But I was incredibly innocent and naive, and I just put one foot in front of the next, and I just put myself out there. Whilst recognition did arrive earlier, 1984's Like a Virgin is to this day considered the album that launched the lace-clad singer into superstardom. Still audibly dance-like, the Like a Virgin album was embraced by the mainstream worldwide and featured a particular 80s new wave pop track that would forever brand Madonna. She became that it person, that cultural icon. Madonna has gone far beyond just being a pop singer. You know, she became Elvis Presley, Marilyn Monroe. The new experience of worldwide fame was soon followed by another, though this time a more personal one. In 1985, Madonna married actor Sean Penn. I think most people have that one person, you know? I mean, the person that you're, you know, live and die for, the person that gets right down in your heart and soul. And from True Love sprung Madonna's 1986 album, True Blue. An optimistically poppy and upbeat piece of work, the True Blue album also marked the beginning of a different kind of love affair for Madonna. 
one with Latin culture. She made it plain for the whole world to see in the Spanish acoustic guitar driven La Isla Bonita. Almost 13 years before the Latin explosion of 1999, Madonna had already discovered the sensual appeal of Latin sound and imagery, something that would remain with her in years to come. 1989 not only marked the release of the Like a Prayer album, but also Madonna's divorce from Sean. The record's mood was more daring and serious than its predecessors. Madonna had begun to provocatively question and push the boundaries on social taboos surrounding sex, racism and religion. The Catholicism of my childhood was just a series of rules that were um, forced on me and a dogma that I didn't understand. It was just like, this is what you do and, and there is no reason why. This is just what you do. The Like a Prayer album was an overflow of exciting blends of pop, funk and spine-tingling ballads. But the controversial video for the title track ultimately managed to upstage the record's riches. That album has some amazing, brilliant stuff on it. There was a real magic about that whole time, and a real intensity, and a real... It was really powerful. In 1990, Madonna and her crew embarked on the Blonde Ambition Tour, and on display was a significant clue of what would soon follow. Madonna's flirtation with sex beyond conventional boundaries culminated in her 1993 Erotica album. Carrying a parental advisory sticker, the album was a sexy mixture of pop, contemporary club beats, and 70s disco call. Causing further controversy, though, was the darker, brooding title track, Erotica. Everyone's afraid. And I'm telling them not to be afraid. 1994's Bedtime Stories album saw Madonna return to a warmer, lighter and less threatening sound. It was perhaps Madonna's collaboration with Icelandic singer Björk on the haunting single Bedtime Story which opened her eyes to the endless possibilities of today's ever-evolving electronic music. So what? 1989. Maybe I'd like to have a family before it's too late. 1999. You don't need to have a man to have a child. This is the 21st century. Madonna's current movie role alongside good friend English actor Rupert Everett is no less than her 16th movie appearance. If her film career has been somewhat checkered, at least the songs from the films have provided Madonna with some of her biggest hits over the years. The first of the movie hits came from the well-loved comedy drama Desperately Seeking Susan. Desperately Seeking Susan was followed by Shanghai Surprise and Who's That Girl, the title track of which gave her another huge worldwide hit. Seriously big budget in the early 90s when Madonna won the role of villain Breathless Mahoney in Dick Tracy, in which she starred opposite her then boyfriend, Warren Beatty. My bottom hurts just thinking about it. She wants you to treat me like I'm a bad girl. Whose side are you on? Side I'm always on. Mine. I was beginning to wonder what a girl had to do to get arrested. I know how you feel. You don't know if you want to hit me or kiss me. I get a lot of that. Madonna then decided to let the cameras backstage on her Blonde Ambition tour for the documentary film In Bed With Madonna. For the first time, we were given glimpses of her backstage at her concert. Halfway through Fears of the Groove, the monitors went off and said, I cannot hear myself. And he's just standing there like he doesn't know what's going on. 
Madonna first thing in the morning. The sleeping pill didn't wear off yet. Discussing the show with her family. A couple of little scenes there were a little... X-ray. do without. That movie was not about hesitating. That was about making a hardcore documentary of everything we did on the road. And if I was going to do it, I was going to do it. This used to be my playground. This used to be our pride and joy. A year later, Madonna was starring in A League of Their Own, which was the beginning of a close friendship with co-star Rosie O'Donnell. So here was this dancer girl who was, you know, didn't know which end of the bat to hold. And, uh, but she really did learn. And you could teach her through dance moves, in fact. You could teach her, like, you know, step, step, twist to hit the ball. And... <laughs> Rosie is a great baseball player. And I just, I, I am so glad she's here because she <laughs> coaches me on everything. Now I'll show you how. <laughs> The biggest movie role of her career, though, came in Alan Parker's 1996 big-budget version of the stage play, Evita. A film that took eight years to plan and a leading role that was a dream come true for Madonna. Her depiction of the complex Evita Peron was too much for some Argentinians, who felt the star would tarnish the reputation of their legendary first lady. After a personal appeal to the Argentinian premiere, Madonna was eventually allowed onto the balcony in Buenos Aires for the film's most famous scene. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left you. Well, I, I felt sort of possessed because I was standing where she once stood. There was an electricity in the air and it was one of those magical moments. When I looked down at the thousands of extras, I felt like a lot of them were looking up at me and sort of thinking I was her, so it just turned it into this kind of surreal moment. The reviews for Evita were the best of Madonna's acting career, and at the 1997 Golden Globe Awards, Madonna Evita. <laughs> incredibly blessed this past year and I have much to be thankful for I um, making this movie was um, an incredible adventure for me both artistically and spiritually and I learned so much 13 years after her first film appearance she was finally recognized by the movie industry for her acting abilities Madonna and controversy have always gone hand in hand. While some of the earlier videos raised eyebrows for simply being too sexy, as her career progressed, it was dealing with controversial issues that got her into trouble. For instance, teenage pregnancy. religion and interracial love. The Like a Prayer controversy cost Madonna a $5 million advertising deal with a soft drinks company, who were planning to use the song in a commercial until they saw the video. The video compared the taboo of interracial love with the persecution of Christ.
It also made comparisons between religious and sexual ecstasy. Not surprisingly, some Christian groups were outraged. Despite the controversy, Like a Prayer was shown on TV, unlike 1990's Justify My Love, which was banned for being too suggestive. Wanting, needing, waiting for you. A lot of the themes that I'm exploring in my videos aren't meant for children, so I understand that they say they can't show it, and I accept it. But that's where I am right now in my life. I just want to be a lover. He has played a part in much of Madonna's music and imagery. The video for the title track of her 10th album, Erotica, took her further than she'd been before. I think it scared a lot of people. I think it scared anybody who's afraid of sexuality or who's been raised to think of sexuality as, as something dirty, taboo. Off the back of Erotica came the release of a book, Sex which featured Madonna and friends in compromising positions alongside fantasies she'd written. Whilst critics called it soft porn, Madonna called it art. I was turning my nose up at the whole idea that, you know, women aren't allowed to be sexual and erotic and provocative and intelligent and thoughtful at the same time. It was in 1996, on the set of the epic film Evita, that Madonna discovered she was pregnant with her first child. Surviving this shoot and being, well, I'm, I'm almost five months pregnant now, too. I put that down to the fact that I have a guardian angel. Later that year, on October 14th, Madonna and fitness trainer Carlos Leon became the proud parents of a little baby girl, Lourdes Maria Chicone Leon, more commonly now known as Lola. Madonna consequently took refuge in keeping a low profile, not only to get a new record underway, but also to become a devoted mother, and as a result began a journey of self-discovery and spiritual transformation. I started asking myself so many questions, like what's important in life? What really matters in life? What am I gonna teach my daughter? Why am I here? Why is she here? Why, you, you know, I just asked myself every elementary question you could ever ask yourself. Madonna quickly submerged herself in the practice of yoga and began studying the Kabbalah, the wisdom of ancient Jewish mysticism. Following Madonna's rebirth, it was time to focus on music, to channel the newfound spiritual energy into a record, and perhaps more importantly, into a drastically progressive sound. I love a lot of sort of techno music, but the thing about techno music is that you never think of it as being very emotional. So what I wanted to do was make it intimate make it emotional, like sort of prove that it could be. Enter British producer William Orbit, who after sending Madonna a sample tape of his music, received an almost immediate response. She called back within five days later, having worked on all the songs. I knew that when I heard what she'd done, that there was something exciting in, in the offing. In 1998, the album Ray of Light was released and spawned three Grammy Awards later on in the year. It also made Madonna a sure winner at the stateside 1998 MTV Video Music Awards and at the Europe Music Awards in Milan, Italy. But Madonna's collaboration with William Orbit wasn't restricted to the Ray of Light album. The pair got together again to work on a song for the soundtrack to the second Austin Powers film, 1999's Beautiful Stranger. The collaboration added another Grammy Award to Madonna's collection, as well as yet another victory at the MTV Video Music Awards of 1999. Around the same time, Madonna kissed America goodbye and began a new love affair with Great Britain and British film director Guy Ritchie. Work also started on her new album, Music. And in much the same way as with William Orbit, French producer Miroir was enlisted after Madonna heard a sample of his work. I think she, she had a good idea what she, uh, she wants, but she's really open. Uh, when she... Um, you, you could start on one direction and change completely. Uh, maybe one hour later. Another milestone in Madonna's life was just about to take place. 
In March 2000, Madonna and Guy finally confirmed rumours that they were expecting a child. And on August the 11th, Madonna became a mother for the second time to a little baby boy called Rocco Ritchie. And if the world spectators have one thing to learn from Madonna's experience with her first child, it is to now know much better than to assume Rocco's arrival signifies the closing chapter of her career. I've just begun. It's like the tip of the iceberg. I have such a long journey ahead of me. And where it goes, I don't know. Hopefully closer to the truth.